Climate change as we are seeing it is basically human induced climate change which is caused by the emissions of greenhouse gases that are mainly caused by burning fossil fuels like coal oil and natural gas which humans have been doing for the last century and a half ever since the industrial revolution. What they do is they go into the atmosphere, they cause the atmosphere to heat up and as a result we have what is called global warming. Uh, global atmospheric temperatures have risen by about one degree over the last 100, 150 years and they're projected to rise by another two degrees, maybe go up to three degrees. It may not sound very much but it is actually potentially catastrophic for human life on earth at that level. Those kinds of fluctuations in temperature on that scale have caused ice ages in the past and they might cause very severe uh, melting of ice if the temperature goes up. So it's a global threat, it's an existential threat for mankind and we have to do something about it. Climate change is going to impact all parts of the world. Um, some parts of the world are more vulnerable than others. Uh, Bangladesh because of its uh, geographic location on the delta of uh, two of the mightiest rivers in the world, the Ganges and the Brahmaputra, being a very low-lying uh, country and at the same time highly dense country in terms of population and at the same time being a very poor country gives it a triple whammy in terms of its vulnerability and hence by almost any measure that you rank countries in terms of vulnerability Bangladesh almost always is either first, second or third in terms of being the most vulnerable country in the world. Dhaka is going to find it very difficult to respond just by itself. This is a national problem, not a, a city only problem. And so even though the city authorities might try and improve drainage, might try and improve the conditions of some of the slum dwellers, the rate of migration in migration into Dhaka is overwhelming, so they cannot cope. So it has to be a national uh, program, it has to be a, a national planning and investment that enables people who might come to Dhaka to go somewhere else, to other cities and other towns, which means we have to build the infrastructure in these other cities and other towns so that they will attract people to go there and not come to Dhaka, because Dhaka cannot absorb another 10 million people. There will be another 10 million people coming to the cities from the rural areas in the next 20 years. It's quite clearly not doing enough. The international community has failed to live up to the promises that were made well over 20 years ago when the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change was signed. That was a treaty that all countries all signed. They promised to take actions. They did a little bit, they didn't do very much and they certainly didn't do enough. Well, I'm actually a, an optimist. I think Bangladesh has um, already become aware of this problem quite significantly a number of years ago from the Prime Minister down to the farmer in Bangladesh knows about climate change and they're not sitting idle, they're doing things, the government is doing things, NGOs are doing things, everybody in Bangladesh is trying to figure out what to do. So we are already up several rungs of a, a steep learning curve, la ladder of knowledge on adapting to climate change and that's why in Bangladesh, particularly when it comes to community-based adaptation, the rest of the world comes to see what we are doing. So in a very real sense, when the rest of the world gets affected by climate change, this is where they will come to learn how to tackle it because we are tackling today what the rest of the world will have to tackle tomorrow.